I live in Brisbane, Australia, which is the sort of place where when you tell someone you're a 3D artist, they give you that deer in headlights look, or they act surprised and say they didn't know that 3D TVs were still a thing. Like most places of the world, Brisbane just isn't known for its CG community. But when I visited Los Angeles last year and I met my Airbnb host, I was surprised that he not only knew what a CG artist was, but he wanted to know what my specialty was. He's like, are you retopo, sculptor, layout? And I was like, uh, I thought my specialty was just 3D. It was a completely different place. So I was there for four weeks. Uh, I visited the famous Noman School, uh, Corridor Digital, and a VFX house called Barnstorm. And one night when I was having dinner with some of the artists that I met, I realized that I felt like a phony. I felt like this little fish in a big scary ocean. Because I think that while, you know, forums, uh, YouTube, art station, like it's, it's done a lot to bring the community close together. And you can learn a lot and do everything online nowadays, but still nothing beats physically being there. When you're surrounded by greatness, you feel uncomfortable. And that discomfort makes you want to improve in order to fit in. So for the first time ever in my life, I started looking at possibly moving, moving my entire family, three people, but still, to a different city, all to become a better artist. But not LA. The people there are wonderful and I had a great experience, but the traffic and the poverty were a little bit too much for me. Uh, but I wanted to know if there were similar cities. Like you often hear things like, oh, there's a big CG community in Vancouver. Like, well, what are some other cities? What are they around the world? Because it hasn't really been quantified, at least as far as I can see online. Um, so I did some research. I discovered that ArtStation lets you see how many members live in a city, and you can even narrow it down to what software they use. Um, I also found a website called Game Dev Map, which shows you the number of game studios in any given city, and another one called VFX World Map, which does the same thing, but for VFX studios and animation houses. I then hired a data entry company to manually do searches on those three websites and log the data for every major city around the world into one spreadsheet. So in this video, I'm gonna give you the top findings and then at the end, I'm gonna give you the full report that you can download and see all the results. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is the top 10 cities in terms of artist population. So just using solely member data from ArtStation, not taking into account game or VFX studios, we'll do that later. Um, and these visualizations aren't necessary, but I like geography, so I wanted to have a little camera that travels around the world. All made with Blender 2.8, by the way, the new real-time renderer, it's in beta and everything, but it's gonna be really sweet once everyone starts using it. Okay, so here we go. Flying in here at number 10, we've got Madrid from Spain. Uh, I wouldn't have put them on the top 10 list, but evidently I don't know much about Spain. There's a big artist community there. All right, flying over to number nine, what's it gonna be? Of course, China appears in any population-based ranking, and I'm sure they've probably even got more than that with their own like equivalent art station, but for the Chinese community. But yeah, there's a lot. All right, so number eight. Okay, this one was a little surprising because I didn't expect there to be that many, but San Francisco. Uh, it's where Pixar is, but that's the only one I know. Um, but there's also a lot of game studios, which I'll get to when we uh, show that data. Now, number seven. This one was kind of surprising because it's the only Canadian city in the top 10. And I would have thought that Vancouver and Toronto would be way bigger, but evidently Montreal. And now another French speaking city, of course, the capital of the French speaking world. It is Paris, uh, which makes sense. Whenever you've got like a language bubble, you're gonna have like a large community within that bubble. And the capital of the European world, some say, London. And this is actually the city that I'm most potentially looking at moving to, uh, just because I like it. My family's from there originally, so anyway. All right, now number four. This is a shock. I lived, I lived in South Korea for three years, Seoul in two of those years, and I didn't think there was much of a CG community. But then I remembered anime and mobile gaming is absolutely bananas over there. So that does actually kind of make sense. All right, number three, this is another shock. Um, we are in South America, Sao Paulo, right? 
Uh, one of the best artists that I've ever worked with, Gilhom Henrik, shout out if you're listening, is from Brazil, but he's the only one I know. I didn't know that there was such a bustling community there, but evidently there is. And number two, much like the last one, this was also a shock. Where are we going? Russia. Moscow. Which I guess makes sense. Like you see a lot, like on ArtStation, there's like a Russian sounding name. I didn't realize just the quantity of it. That is almost as big as number one. Which of course, can you guess what it is? Can you guess? Of course, it is the one that I mentioned at the start. Uh, Los Angeles is still the capital of the CG world. You often hear people say it's Vancouver and whatnot, and yeah, maybe there's a lot of studios there which we'll get to, but in terms of raw artists, it's still the number one place. Um, Actually, the first time I did this test, um, LA was ranked like seventh, Uh, but then I discovered that LA is so big and sprawling that people were actually listing specific suburbs as their location, like uh, Glendale or Burbank. So when I included all those answers, rolled it in, um, it became number one. Um, I did the same thing with San Francisco, but those two cities seem to be the only place where artists were doing that. I checked London, Moscow, that kind of thing, and nobody was listing like Soho or whatever. So it seems to be just those two. Now, is this 100% accurate? Of course not. You're never gonna get 100% accuracy. But I would argue that ArtStation is such a dominant website within the CG space. It's where employers are going. It's where you need to be if you want to get a job nowadays. So I would argue that it's probably the best representation of active professionals working within the entertainment art space. So that means games, VFX, and animation. If you're not on ArtStation, chances are you're probably not gonna find work, so it tends to drive everybody to it. Um, and even if it's only like like one out of three artists are on the website, that number is gonna be relatively the same everywhere you go. So I think that within probably a 20% buffer, this ranking is probably pretty accurate. Okay, but this little fly through animation thing has just been a you know bit of fun to rank the top 10 cities. But now let's take a look at the actual data with some good old fashioned bar graphs. So when we do this, we can see that there's a pretty huge uh, difference between number one and number 10, it's almost double. So there's a pretty big range there. And then when we include in the game and VFX studios, it gets even more interesting. For one, you can see that almost every single city has at least double the number of game studios to VFX studios, uh, with one exception being London, which seems to have a pretty even spread across it. Um, Now, this is just the number of studios. It doesn't take into account the number of artists working at the studio. So say, for example, Blizzard in LA might hire 2,000 artists and a small indie studio in Seoul might literally hire two, and yet they both count as one in this graph. So it's not an accurate representation of opportunity. However, I would say that it is a good sign of uh, the community there and uh, what would you call it? Like a good sign that things are going well because when a company succeeds, there tends to be other pop-up companies around it that try to do what they do. So I think when there is a large number of studios in a space, it tends to show a strong community of artists that can do that work, um, but also a government that makes it easy can make it easy for a company like that to succeed. Um, But anyways, having said that, this is just still the ranking of artists' uh, populations, one to 10. Let's now take a look at just VFX studios. And when we do that and we rank it for the, the whole world, like which cities in the whole world have the most VFX studios, we are now joined by six other cities. So from left to right, we've got London, New York, Los Angeles, Paris, Vancouver, Toronto, Montreal, Berlin, Barcelona, and good old Sydney, Australia. You came through in the end there. Um, Most surprising about this, London has a heap of VFX work going on. Absolutely bonkers. Almost double what number two is. And yes, double 
Los Angeles, which is where it came from, right? Hollywood. Um, and since I was curious, like what are the size of these companies, I just did a search for each city and I wrote down the, uh, the, the most recognizable names that I recognize from seeing breakdowns and you know in credits and things like that. So most of these are feature film VFX houses. Uh, and these are the ones that tend to hire hundreds of artists. Um, so from what I can tell, most of the feature and like like top tier TV shows like Game of Thrones and stuff like that tend to be done in Los Angeles, Vancouver, as well as some in London. Uh, there's even a tiny little bit of Game of Thrones in, uh, in Sydney uh, at Method and Melbourne. Uh, but anyways, those I think are the three uh, big feature, feature places. Uh, now Paris, as well as Berlin and Barcelona, um, because those are like language, like different languages, obviously, than, than English, there is a lot of advertising like client-based work because a lot of businesses, they don't want to work with a company that speaks English. They want to work with one that speaks their language. Uh, so those uh, those cities tend to have a lot of those VFX houses. Um, so I've recognized a few in Paris, MPC Boff, Super Monks Unit, not that recognizable, but there's a fair bit there. And I didn't recognize hardly any in Berlin or Barcelona. Um, but yeah, so that's again, just VFX studios. So now let's take a look at game studios. So when we have a look at this, we're joined by five more cities ranked in the world. Uh, so again, I threw in the names of the studios that I recognized. Um, okay, so when it comes to San Francisco crushing it, um, most of the names of those 281, I only recognized those. The others tended to almost entirely be mobile gaming. And that makes sense to me because San Francisco being the heart of the tech world, you're competing with rent and talent pools from like Facebook, Twitter, Google. Like if you're gonna be in San Francisco, you better have a really good reason. And mobile gaming right now is absolutely crushing it. It's actually, in terms of revenue, it's now taking in 51% of the revenue of the game space. So it's now earning more than consoles and, uh, and PC gaming. Um, which is huge and it hasn't happened before. So now a lot of investors and tech people that weren't in the game space previously are now looking at mobile as a very viable way to make a lot of money. So from what I could tell, San Francisco has a lot of those mobile game companies. There's still some big names there, 2K Games, Blizzard. If I had to guess, I would say that a lot of those are like headquarters, which they're in San Francisco for networking and investors and that kind of thing. If I had to guess, Los Angeles is still the place for the AAA game studios. And then for the rest of the cities, they tend to have a lot of American companies that have set up base in those cities around the world in order to get access to that talent pool. Like Tokyo has got like, I, I was surprised. It's got Riot, Rockstar, uh, Epic, like that's, you know, getting access to the Japanese talent pool. Um, but yeah, so this is, you know, it's pretty interesting. And when you actually have a look at the, the number of artists, when you throw in that data as well, it's kind of interesting to see like where you might have a better chance at getting a job. When it comes to Amsterdam and Frankfurt, it's almost, uh, almost hilarious that they've almost got like one game studio for every three artists that are there. <laughs> <laughs> um, and obviously, you know, there's more artists than what you might find on ArtStation. I'm aware of that. But, you know, just looking at this data, it does look that way. It's kind of funny. And maybe they are really small studios. You know, maybe they do have like two or three people working at them. I don't know. Um, but there you go. That's That was kind of interesting to me. So if you'd like to see that spreadsheet of like, all the data that I found on maybe see where your own city or country ranks, as well as a PDF report with a summary of everything in this video, there is a link to that in the description. All I ask is that you join my newsletter. These sort of reports and research take a lot of time and money to create, and reports like these typically go for thousands of dollars, I've seen them, uh, but I'm gonna give it to you for free. All I ask is that you uh, join my circle of friends in the form of a newsletter. So if you found this video interesting, please give it a like so that other people can find it. And if you can think of somebody who might find this industry data useful, feel free to forward it to them.
And if you're interested in getting a job in the industry, um, you can click on one of these videos on your screen where I interviewed some of the artists that I met in Los Angeles that work at game studios and VFX and their advice on how to get a job, how to get better um, is really, really good. So I'll just sit here while the uh, end screen plays.